All right, I'm at the studio and I'm just uh, getting things arranged. Uh, these are all the clays that I've been working on for the, over a year. That one right there, Distant War Cries, that, that's several years old. And uh, I've just been working and storing and uh, finally got everything in one place. I've got one other clay, but it's at a gallery down in Jackson, uh, Wyoming. Uh, right now I'm going through all my tools, separating them by metal tools with different shapes and these uh, Ken's tools, uh, which are uh, just amazing little tools of uh, wire and wrapped uh, ends with uh, wire wrapped around uh, to give kind of a texturing when you sculpt with them. Um, some of these tools uh, here uh, have the round ball tips on them. Um, this is the uh, biggest ball tip I have. Actually, this one is. And uh, this is th these metal tools are from SculptureDepot.net, and uh, then I've got these uh, tools here from uh, SculptTools.com with the uh, silicone tips on them, which are just amazing for fine detail work and then these uh, little rubber tip tools as well uh, from sculpturedepot.net and uh, then I've got a bunch of my wire tools up here combination of galyptic uh, wire tools which are from sculpturedepot.net uh, they're a tool that they designed that has an allen wrench uh, screw in it and you can interchange uh, the ends uh, for any shape of wire that you want uh, by just loosening that up, pulling out the wire, and then replacing it with another wire. Um, that box with those wires are back at your home. But uh, they never wear out, and they never break. And uh, if you want to replace a head for any reason, if you you know run it through a grinder or something like that, it's probably the only way you're going to wreck it. Uh, is uh, you can take that and uh, buy a new head and not the handle and uh, it only costs you a couple of dollars to replace the head. So these are my wire tools and these are all the tools that I use uh, in the creation of my work. Um, got my uh, uh, mannequins, uh, the horse mannequin, the skull mannequin. Those two uh, items over there are from uh, Jeff Wolf who's a uh, sculptor who sells them online. I think it at uh, artrodeo.com, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, anyway, look up Jeff Wolf and uh, you'll find where to get these uh, wonderful uh, mannequins that uh, help you understand the muscles. Uh, on the other side of the horse are, is the bone structure. Uh, so half of its muscle, half of its bone. And then of course you got the uh, uh, skull there, but you also on the other side you have the uh, muscles and everything on the skull But uh, yeah, just uh, That's eight Clays of mine that I've been storing here not the mannequin. That's that's from uh, anatomytools.com uh, And then the uh, approaching storm behind her and uh, the horse piece that I did for the instructional DVD um, as well and uh, and of course my uh, I love that piece I don't know why I can't get it cast but anyway it's called Distant War Cries it's a Crow Indian well I'm getting a handle on the studio I'm, uh, I got my background here and I'm going through some other stuff that's on my sculpting stand right now a uh, little portable uh, tripod that I can set up on a table with a camera uh, thing and and then of course uh, my cell phone <laughs> um, but anyway just getting things arranged and I should be back in my studio within the next uh, couple of days starting to work on a new piece and uh, let's see if I can get this around here there's the uh, horse armature I'm going to be working with and uh, the figure down below it that uh, I'm going to put it either on the horse or next to the horse. I'm not certain what I'm going to do yet. Uh, you can see it's still a bit, bit of a mess. I've got uh, 
an old piece called Sacagawea that's uh, just the, the upper bust uh, of the piece that was cast many years ago. Uh, that's the head of a cowboy piece that I did life size and I just that's all I got left of it. There's uh, John Lovewell, uh, his clay of his face commission that I did and then a demo that I started and never got finished with for a bunch of Northern Cheyenne uh, Indian students who came to my studio. I got a print by Rocky Hawkins up there who's a great friend of mine. He's a hell of an artist and he did uh, all these faces with different war paints and stuff like that. Drawing by uh, Todd Connor and another sketch by Todd Connor over there. Got a picture of my three children back uh, probably 20 years ago and uh, my daughter and her her uh, uh, partner uh, in that picture, Heidi, and there's a little thing that she sent me for Christmas one year. And uh, let's see, I'll get this over here. Uh, the guy in the middle is uh, the fellow that uh, designed uh, Alfred E. Newman for Mad Magazine and was the uh, uh, first uh, managing editor or publisher. I don't remember what exactly he was, but he uh, was the head honcho at Mad Magazine back when it first started. And that's me and another artist standing uh, on either side of him. He gave me that, one of his original business calling cards and signed it to me which I thought was kind of cool. He's an artist that lives up in Livingston, Montana, uh, and does incredible uh, landscapes. These are a couple of uh, certificates I got from the uh, uh, May Gallery down in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona, uh, years back. And uh, these are pictures of uh, a life-size bronze I did called uh, Summer Wind that was set up in front of a house in Jackson, Wyoming. And this is a sketch that uh, Todd Connor did of me some years ago. So that's my studio, uh, humble as it may be. And uh, I hope to have myself back in here. That's a painting by Todd Connor. He just stores his stuff here, and I figured I might as well put one of them on my wall. And then that's a print that I bought. All right. Everybody have a great night, and I'm going to go back to work to uh, straightening up my studio. As I drive home, I want to stop at the uh, Veterans Memorial, uh, which is straight ahead. You can just barely see the flag on the uh, right next to those big trees on the uh, right or left of the uh, center of the picture. And that, that's the uh, Veterans Memorial. And you just turn into the street here. This is Charles Street and then you got the high school and the grade school right here and then you just drive into this parking lot of the school and there's the memorial straight ahead and that's where my uh, monumental bronze is of uh, the uh, fellow who's about to go into the military uh, from a local ranch here. It's nobody in particular it just shows that that's where our soldiers come from is from the uh, ranks of civilians. And there's our flag. The memorial uh, was dedicated uh, by, uh, well, it was dedicated just a couple of months before 9-11. Uh, July 4th, 2001, and uh, pr pretty proud. There's my monumental bronze, the uh, young man who's uh, received his call to go into the military, and he's got his dad's uh, helmet in one hand and his cowboy hat on his other in his other hand, and he's looking up at the flag in respect. I can get all three of all of them in focus there. Yeah, there we go. And he's looking up at the flag to give honor to those who've fallen before. So that's my uh, bronze veteran's legacy. 
I sculpted it uh, in my studio that I just can't left all about well over 19 two, during the year of 2000 and got a cast and ready to go in 2001 I even put up a plaque with my name on it unbelievable All right, well, I'm gonna head home now and put this video together. I, my dad's name is here. There's my dad's brick. Uh, I p had it placed there uh, when they first uh, built this place. I still haven't gotten myself a brick yet. I guess I should at some point, but that's my dad, Homer H. Lemon, U.S. Navy, World War II, and the uh, Republic of Korea. He fought in the Korean War as well. All right, I uh, guess I'll head home and get this video up and get ready for tomorrow.